please join us on this special journey to the Blue Lake in Linden. Nestled in the heart of Guyana, amidst lolling white, gray and red sand hills, brown water creeks, blue water lakes and clear water springs, in the lush green of Guyana's Amazonian vegetation, is the sleepy little bauxite town called Linden. The story of how the town came into being is by no means a mystery. Three communities, Christianburg, Wismer and Mackenzie merged into McMarburg, then Markenburg, and eventually became a township on April 29, 1970. We have been told how George Bain Mackenzie, that adventurous American discovered bauxite in the area in 1913 and commenced mining operations, paving the way for the development of Mackenzie after him. We know of how the Germans inhabited the land on the opposite bank of the Demerara River, 65 miles from the capital Georgetown, and named it Wismer, after a town and seaport in the northern regions of their native land. We have also heard stories of how the Dutch occupied the area immediately north of the boundaries of Wismer and combined the names of its then-governor, Christian Fennett, and his wife's family name. Berg, to give Christianburg its moniker, but the story that eludes many is that of how the wards, the tiny villages that together form the three larger districts which in turn form the township, got their names. Rainbow City, Victory Valley, Half Mile, One Mile, Silvertown, Wisrock, Canvas City, and Amelia's Ward to name a few, might sound like the work of some whimsical, quixotic mind but each either tells a poignant story of the town's history, functions as a directional tool or stands testimony to the will of its people. Amelia's Ward, perhaps the largest ward, is reputed to have derived the name Amelia from the daughter of the then owner of the land. Within Amelia's Ward are Cinderella City, Reliance, Rosina, and Hope Town Square in Reliance. Hope Town Square is so named because each household had one or more members who hailed from Hope Town on the west coast of Burbix. Rosina was named after the American company that built the houses in that particular section of the area. Reliance, more familiarly called self-help scheme, copied from Reliance on the Essequibo coast and was a fitting name because its inhabitants relied heavily on self-help to forge their community into being. The name Cinderella City evokes a feeling of romanticism, but it actually speaks of the vision of its denizen, comprised mainly of poor squatters living in shacks in 1970. The Blue Lakes of Linden, in the heart of Region 10, has become a major tourist attraction for both locals and foreigners seeking to enjoy the wonders of the country enjoying the moment of their special day at one of the blue lakes in Linden. Though it is believed that the lakes are naturally blue, the history and science behind these bodies of water would teach us differently. There are approximately seven such lakes in the mining town of Linden. One of these however has received the stamp of authorization, permitting recreational activities. The lakes were reportedly created during bauxite mining some 100 years ago. These activities are likely the reason for the ponds developing across the Wisrock area. Some believe that the lakes portray blue waters as the soil types marl and kaolinite. A type of clay and rocky soil is clear and reflects the color of the sky, as opposed to the usual golden brown or dark colored waters Guyanese may be more familiar with due to the mining activities that once occurred there. Some still believe the site is not safe for swimming as landslips may occur, causing the ground to swallow its contents. The site was however declared safe by the Ministry of Tourism in November 2021. For tourists.s one can imagine, the venue is quite exciting as it offers a unique picturesque view that can only be enjoyed in Linden. Not only is it now an attraction for swimmers looking to indulge in a day of fun, but also for lovers looking to tie the knot at a serene and intimate spot. Several couples have already made the Kara Kara Blue Lake their wedding destination, while others are anxiously planning their next visit to the site. If you are traveling from the capital city of Georgetown to the Blue Lake, prepare to sit tight for about two and a half hours on the drive to Linden. The distance from Georgetown to Linden is approximately 90 kilometers while the drive will amount to about 108 kilometers. Be prepared with sunscreen and make sure you wear comfortable shoes to embark on the journey to the lake. 
Some of the activities you enjoy besides swimming include kayaking, and if you are like me, simply floating in your favorite inflatable ring will be quite satisfying. It is advised that you take extra caution during your trip to the Blue Lake. Hope you enjoy the trip. Please like and subscribe. Cinderella City had no roads, electricity or potable water, but the people there envisioned it rising to a position of stature, the Cinderella of the town. Today, they are well on their way to accomplishing their vision as they continue to work to make their community one of the better ones in Linden. About one mile downhill from Amelia's ward is Rainbow City. Thirty-odd years ago, it comprised several quaint houses, gaily painted in lilacs and pinks, oranges and yellows, blues and greens. Rainbow City was thus more than apt a name for this kaleidoscopic community. A back of Rainbow City lay a vast, swampy wasteland, teeming, as can be imagined, with a reptilian population as varied and interesting as in the heart of the Amazon. When the need to have the Demerara River dredged to accommodate bauxite transporting vessels arose, it was suggested that the sand be deposited into the swamp. From this emerged the idea of retrieving the land from the swamp and developing it into a housing scheme. Is it any surprise then, that this area, which comprised houses made of painted aluminum sheets, was called Retrieve? Let us now visit a few communities on the western bank of the Demerara River, with names no less imaginative and informative. Exactly half a mile from the historic Hamilton's train station is the community of Half Mile and one mile from that station lies Yes, you guessed it one mile. This rock is situated between Wismer and Rockstone and Green Valley lies in a lush Green Valley. Does that mean that the Valley of Tears is a place where the inhabitants are always crying? Not by any means, but it's myriad creeks springs and streams crisscrossing the landscape did make it seem like the valley cried tears. Those living there though felt the name had negative connotations, and so changed it to one that is definitely more upbeat Victory Valley. Then there are Silvertown and Canvas City. Silvertown, with its unpainted aluminum houses glimmering brightly in the noonday sun is neighbor to Canvas City, where its poor but resourceful populace used discarded canvas to construct homes they could proudly call their own, each with its own unique story. These communities merged to form one cohesive unit, the town of Linden with its rich history and vibrant culture.